Sublative rejuvenation is a device used for re rejuvenating the skin, sort of setting the clock back on that photo damage, collagen that's become more lax over time. So you improve the tone, texture, luminosity of the skin and get some tightening as well. So what would differentiate this from other rejuvenation or other fractional resurfacing devices or even traditional resurfacing? There's a lot of fractional devices on the market. What's unique about sublative rejuvenation is this is bipolar radio frequency. The other fractional devices on the market are actually lasers, so they have a certain wavelength and they target certain things in the skin. Sublative rejuvenation is using your body's natural impedance to generate heat, and it's that heat that helps rejuvenate the collagen and elastin. Is there any limitation on, you know, like on the Fitzpatrick scale or, you know, for the consumer going from somebody who may have an Irish descent all the way down to somebody right. who may be a very dark African American? Is there any uh, people that are ruled out, you know, to, to, on this procedure? Again, another unique feature about <laughs> sublative rejuvenation is because it's radio frequency, it's not going to target the pigment and it's safe for skin types one through six. So it's colorblind? Yes. Who would be an ideal candidate for this procedure? An ideal candidate actually sort of runs the gamut. You can have someone who just needs a little bit of rejuvenation and you can turn the program down a little bit, just do a light treatment, or if someone needs some, a more significant rejuvenation, if they have a lot of photo damage, fine lines, wrinkles, then they get a heavier treatment. And it's usually a series of treatments to get your best result. Does this technology stand out against a, a CO2 laser or a fractional CO2 laser? A CO2 laser, when you're fully ablating the skin, has quite a significant recovery. You're taking off the entire la top layers of your skin, so that's a downtime of at least a week or two. And that's your old traditional CO2 fully ablated lasers, or erbium. With the fractional CO2, you still also have wounds in the skin that you need time to recover from. This is a less aggressive form of rejuvenating the skin. Now, is this a standalone procedure, or is this something that you need to do in, with others in conjunction with something else? Or, and on that same note, can you do this in conjunction with something else? You certainly can do this in conjunction with, with other things. You know, whether you're coming in for a whole facial rejuvenation and you need a little filler, a little Botox, and then rejuvenate the texture, fine lines, and wrinkling of the skin as well. Is it safe to use over fillers, or at the same time it's that you're perfectly, doing fillers? It's perfectly safe to use over someone who's had filler or Botox. So is there any areas on the body that you generally have you've been unsuccessful with that you don't typically recommend? No. Really? I've used it off the face, you know, chest. Um, I just did a woman's chest and arms who has a, a lot of photo damage, and she's healed beautifully. Mm -hmm. so if it, do you have any control over pulses and... and uh, Fluents and things yes, of that nature. Yes, you do control. Um, you do control the level of treatment that you'd like to perform. So, if you want just a very mild treatment, you can turn the what they call the joules or the energy down, and that's right. on program A. And you can increase as you feel fit for your patient, as you see fit for your patient. On a scale from one to five, with five meaning it hurts, <laughs> does it? How? What is the pain tolerance? The pain level on this? With a very mild treatment, it's practically not, I mean, the patients really don't even feel it. Um, with, with a very heavy treatment, I do prefer to use the topical anesthesia because they'll feel it like little prickly sensations. Okay. What is the cost to the patient for this? Obviously you're in New York City, so we're not asking for a national thing, but in your market, in your area. Um, of course it is geographic. Um, and you know, in New York you could probably look to anywhere from 800 to thousand dollars per treatment. And how many treatments does this typically take? It depends on the patient and what their goals are, but on average anywhere from two to four. Okay. Um, and how, what's the, the timing between treatments? About four to six weeks apart is oh, perfectly reasonable. Four to six weeks, okay. Um, and then how many, okay, so we said roughly two to four treatments is how many would be, uh, what are the post-op uh, procedures, if any, or uh, not post-op post procedures, post-op care, if any? Sure. Uh, um, post-op care is actually very easy. Patients look a little pink, so if it's a very aggressive treatment, they may look like they've gotten a sunburn. Within about an hour or two, that'll dissipate and they'll start to see the little dots. As long as it's been about 12 to 16 hours, they can then put um, sunscreen and makeup on. Okay. So, as far as from the recovery time, from the time I've had it, or what, let me rephrase it, what the, what's the appointment time typically? Do you see them again before the next appointment? If I had it done on a Friday, do I need to come in on Monday? Do I need to come in the next day? No, I just, I see my patients, you know, at their next visit. Okay, so there's no follow-up the next day or the next week or anything? I can go six weeks? Absolutely.
Okay. Has there been any complications that you've been involved with or that you know about of anybody else? I personally have not had any issues with the device mm -hmm. or the treatment. Um, I am I'm not aware of any, and you know, with any new technology, there are always you know, some incidental findings that one person may have a unique reaction to a procedure. Right. Um, is this something like one where you have to be concerned about somebody with herpes or any of the other things like with traditional sure, effects? That, that is something that would stand true for any procedure on the face. Okay. Um, and then as far as the, for other physicians, what is the, the actual procedure uh, from start to end, from prep to finish, if you would mind kind of in detail what, sure. what is involved in an atypical procedure? Depending on the level of treatment the patient's having, some people, if they're having a very mild treatment, don't even need topical anesthesia, and I will just actually have them wash the skin, wipe it down with alcohol, and then do the treatment. Patients who I'm doing a much more aggressive treatment, I may use a topical anesthetic, let that sit for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, wash the face, wipe with alcohol, and then do the procedure. And it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to do a face. To do the whole face. Mm -hmm. Just in case we didn't cover recovery time well enough, um, recovery time when I when I leave, my expectations for a full, you know from when I can return back to work, am I socially sure. awkward, all the way back to I can get back in the sun and I'm at my peak. Well, I'm a dermatologist, so I'm never going to tell you to get back in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's a that's an excellent question. Actually, you know, if it's a mild treatment within a day. What, they're not even going to see the dots anymore. It'll just sort of be a little bit dry. And if it's a heavy treatment, moderate to heavy treatment, usually by day two to three, those dots are already sloughing off. You can still wear makeup. It's just a rough skin surface. Okay. And then, oh, I'm sorry, but then my final, my final result. Results? Yes. New collagen takes at least three months to develop, but you'll already start to see within the first week or two this sort of glow in luminosity in your skin. Your skin is now attracting more water, and water hydrating your skin surface plumps up your skin and gives it a, a glow, and you'll see tightening pore size and improvement in the fine lines and wrinkling. Okay, so roughly it ends up being, you know, by the end it's three months. Right, and you're doing the procedure, let's say, once every four to six weeks, by you know three months after your last procedure is really your, your total result, but you start to see improvement all along the way. Great. So this is one of those things. If I'm planning this for a wedding, I should start <laughs> six months in advance. Don't come so. the day before. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come the day before. <laughs>